Flipping is a great foundation for anything you want to do in the investment world. And I believe it's better than anything else that most people talk about. And, and I'll tell you why. When, when you start as a flipper, all the key ingredients of where you need to be later on in your investment career are mm-hmm. all part of being a flipper. So let me give you an example. As a really knowledgeable flipper and a really go-getter flipper, you're sourcing your own deals, which means you're learning how to market. You're also learning how to acquire. You're learning how to close deals. You're learning how to negotiate. Um, you're learning how to put out contracts and go over terminology. You're learning how to actually buy the deals. You're not assigning them to somebody okay. else. You're- with Dream Real Estate TV. Today I have with me special guest Josh Cohen with DC Force Properties and Josh is going to share with us about investing in real estate and how to take your investing in real estate up to the next level. Josh, if you're first, can tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got started. Sure, Pam. Thanks for having me out today. It's it's a pleasure to be here. I actually started back in 2009. Um, Actually was searching for about six or 12 months. Didn't know anything about real estate investing at that time. And like a lot of folks in the DMV region, I was working a government job, nine to five, sitting in a cubicle with no windows and hoping one day I could become a real estate developer investor. Uh, Found my first mentor um, late 2008, maybe middle of 2008. And it was about six and a half months later, I did my first deal. It was like a very simple patch and paint job in South Arlington. And 65 days later, we'd made 110,000 on our first deal. Ever since then, I've been sold on real estate investing. It's incredible opportunity. It's incredible business. Um, It really takes a lot of entrepreneurial spirit um, and a lot of headache and heartache to to keep going at it and constantly grow your business. But it's been worth it. You know, every every minute of, you know, late night phone calls and it's all worth it. It's all been worth it at the end. Um, And you're always the other thing is that you're always growing. So. You know, I look back to 2009 and I, I look at where we are today. I'm like, first of all, we didn't have an office. We didn't have a staff. Um, we didn't have any real process, no people. You know, you're constantly growing in this business. And I see today where we're at. I'm like, I, I couldn't have dreamed of this in 2009. Like wow. th- this would have looked impossible to me. The guy making 62,000 a year sitting in a government cubicle doing my engineering work. Right. You know, this, this didn't seem possible for me. Um, and today I'm like, you know, we could do a lot more than this, you know, where we're going to be 10 years from now, you know, we're going to be 10 years from now today where we reverse engineer our goals to be, you know, if we think we can build 150 units a year and we put the process and systems in place to do that, then, yeah. you know, we'll probably do that in two years from now. Uh, so it's all about, you know, planning ahead, envisioning your model, planning your model, designing your model and putting hard goals in place to how to reach your goals okay. uh, or hard limits in place to how you're going to reach those goals. But, Today we're on the right track and we're feeling good here at DC First Properties here in Falls Church City. That's great. You're doing so well. Um, so tell us a little bit about um, if somebody's thinking about getting into investing, what would their first steps be as far as an investor if they wanted to get first, into real First of all, investing? like, and I don't want to harp on the fluff, but even for myself, this was so important. I mean, at the end of the day, you have to believe you can do it. And even my, yeah. myself included, I didn't believe I could do it. I'm going to my work job. You know, I'm commuting 35, 40 minutes a day on the Beltway. I'm getting my biweekly paycheck. I didn't believe that, you know, forget about making whatever we're making today. I didn't believe I could make even 20,000 on a deal or or 30,000. I didn't believe it was possible. So first of all, get your mind away from that. And wherever you're at in your business today, think about where you're at and where you want to go. First of all, you have to believe it's possible. And, and if you don't believe it's possible, if you're just one of those people like I was who you're going to make excuses, then, you know, get away from the people who are going to get you the negativity. Like um, even my own family members at that time, like my friends are like, Josh, and that stuff you're trying to do, that's that's only for guys on TV. Like it, it doesn't happen in the real in the real world for people like you. This is not going to this is not reality. Yeah. Um, so you got to get away from all that negativity. Absolutely. Associate yeah. your start to associate yourself with people who are already doing it. You know, join your local RIA groups. Go to meetup groups, go wherever you can go and and be among successful people who are already doing what you want to do. 
Um, so I started to do that. And the second thing that really changed my mind, um, one of my mentors told me to read um, The Strangest Secret. Um, and The Strangest Secret has been the number one motivational resource for over 50 years now. So for myself, I probably read The Strangest Secret at least 50 times, I would say, over a course of two months. And it was after probably two months of reading it, listening to that podcast, I started to believe it. I started to believe, you know, Josh, I can be that developer. I can be that builder. I can be that investor. But if you don't even believe it yourself in your gut, then right. get your get yourself to a point where you do. And, and once you believe in yourself, start to learn the mechanics that are going to make it work for you. Right. Yeah, it's so true, um, actually. Find someone in life where you want to be, right? And the, follow them. The Strangest Secret is an incredible book. Yeah. Um, you're going to read it a few times. You're going to be like, oh, whatever, you know, throw it on my bookshelf. But don't be that person who throws it on the bookshelf. You know, read it, internalize it, and read it over and over and over and over again until you go to bed at night and you're like, Josh, I'm a builder now. I'm a yeah. builder and I'm going to buy properties for cash, Wh yeah. whatever it is you're doing. Yeah. So, so talk to us a little bit about pri private funding. Yeah. So... Everyone sort of starts um, at some point in their career. We start as a flipper, sort of a patch and paint flipper. And I believe that flipping is a great foundation for anything you want to do in the investment world. And I believe it's better than anything else that most people talk about. And, and I'll tell you why. When, when you start as a flipper, all the key ingredients of where you need to be later on in your investment career are all part of being a flipper. So let me give you an example. As a really knowledgeable flipper and a really go-getter flipper, you're sourcing your own deals, which means you're learning how to market. You're also learning how to acquire. You're learning how to close deals. You're learning how to negotiate. Um, you're learning how to put out contracts and go over terminology. You're learning how to actually buy the deals. You're not assigning them to somebody okay. else. You're, you're buying the deals. So buying the deals means you're actually analyzing the deals as if you're going to be the owner you are doing due diligence because you're going to be the owner. Okay. Um, all the core ingredients. So let's go beyond that. Once you get through deciding that this is the deal you're going to buy and mm -hmm. you're going to be the owner for, we're not talking about assigning the contract to somebody else. You're going to own that property and whatever happens on that property, you're responsible. And that's a different mindset. So once you actually get to that point, you're about ready to close the deal or actually halfway to, through that process you're actually finding a way to fund that deal, meaning okay. either you or your partners or your lender's money is on the line and you're responsible for that money. Okay. So go to bed at night and feel that pressure of somebody else's money or some of your money is now involved in that project that we own over there. That's a different sort of pressure than, you know, we'll just give this deal to Pam and she's going to deal with it. Right. So right. as a flipper, you go through that whole process of, finding it, closing it, funding it. Um, and now you're either, if you're a flipper, you're actually managing the construction aspect of it. Although a lot of flippers get to the point where, you know, we're going to hold some properties and flip the other ones. So you're either managing the construction or you're managing it as a property manager. Okay. And now somewhere down the line, you're going to sell it. So what I would say to you in summary is that flipping gets you to understand all the key components of sort of any investment business uh, because commercial developers, commercial, commercial buy and hold folks, they all go through that same process, you know, from, you know, marketing to it, acquiring it, to analyzing it, to funding it, okay. to managing it. Um, so flipping is a great foundation for, you know, going forward in your career. If you're looking 10 years out and you want to do multifamily development, or even five years out, whatever whatever you see your timeline at, it's a great foundation of learning all the skills that you need. And to take that a step further, you'd asked about funding. Um, yeah. Most commercial investors fund their deals a little bit different from the way that a residential investor would. Okay. So a typical residential investor gets in the flipping business and they're applying for what's called a hard money loan. And with a hard money loan, they're getting a certain percent of the deal and then mm -hmm. they're funding the rest with either a partner's money or maybe their money or a combination thereof. Or, you know, even someone like we did, we, you know, you meet them at a RIA and you do a joint venture agreement. Mm -hmm. So normally you're, you're working with some sort of hard money lender. Mm -hmm. You know, commercial investors work a different way. You know, you have debt, which mm -hmm. is normally like a, a loan from a bank. Okay. And then you have equity, which is the 
remaining amount of money you need to do a deal that right. 20 or 25 percent okay so in the residential space um you know most people have a partner or they have some money of their own or they have a joint venture person that they bring in from you know where some networking event that they've gone to for example in the commercial space you have typically some sort of private equity and and a lot of times you know people who are buying like multifamily buildings for example mm -hmm. they do what's called a private placement memorandum which is essentially an ability for them to legally sec compliant raise funds from individuals oh okay i didn't know that yeah. so essentially there's different types of private offerings you can do mm -hmm. and you can have your own essentially fund a, okay. pri a private fund um, okay. there's different flavors of funds that's so for interesting so for example, like we realized that a 506B offering right. is what would enable us to grow our residential business from where okay. it is today into the future. So okay. what a 506B offering does is it allows us to raise money from um, up to 35 sophisticated investors and unlimited accredited investors. Okay. And those people can place money into this private fund that we control okay, and the private fund essentially invests money into our deals um, okay. to cover the money that we're short from the bank. Okay. So if a bank lends us, for example, you know, $400,000 on this property mm -hmm. and we're short 200 K, the there. fund loans the rest. Okay. And in my opinion, if you're going to grow your residential investment business, just like a commercial business, mm -hmm. you're going to have to at some point learn how to raise money. Right. in an SEC compliant fashion. And so we realized, you know, we're, we're hitting this hurdle. We're up against this roadblock on the funding side of our business. Yeah. The only way to, for us to grow our pipeline is we've got to bring in more capital. We need more funds. So we did what a commercial investor would do. And we went out and created this private 506B fund okay. um, where we're going to raise about three and a half million dollars in equity for our business today. Well, that's great. And it's wow. it's a little bit different from most commercial funds. So it's yeah. actually, a, it's a blind fund, which means that um, investors don't know that what projects the funds are going to. Going into, okay. Um, essentially they're investing across our, our entire portfolio. Where in most commercial investments, it's a closed fund where the money they raise goes to a particular project. Okay. Um, in this circumstance as a residential developer, um, we're dispersing the, the, the funding across everything that we're doing, Okay. which actually mitigate, it mitigates the risk for our investors. So it's not just one property, basically, they're actually investing in, across the whole, whole, the whole portfolio, okay. which, which lowers their risk. If one property doesn't perform as well, you know, and the other 10 do, then, you know, they're getting a better return okay. still. Yeah. Makes sense. Definitely makes sense. Talk to us a little bit about your, um, your first commercial deal. That you recently so, acquired. So we, we put all this funding in place. And then at the same time, we're also changing our marketing now. So we want to continue to go, you know, scale our residential construction business. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we want to go where everybody else wants to go, which eventually is that commercial space. Okay. And a lot of people, a lot of people are like, you know, how do I get into my first commercial deal? And, you know, how do I really make the return I want to make on my first commercial deal? Because a lot of people get in commercial deals and, they go south or they don't get the money they thought they were going to get because they're, they're getting a very small piece of the pie. Yeah. Um, you know, they're, they're getting like a very, you know, four or 5% of some bigger deal. Huge. At the end of the day, it doesn't account to a whole lot of money and it takes a lot of time. So and it does take a long time. It yeah. takes a long time. Yeah. So we wanted to go about a different way. Like how do we get into our first commercial deal and make it worth our time and effort? And it goes back to sort of, I was in Seattle, Two years ago, shout out to my friends out in Seattle. One of them's a commercial architect mm -hmm. um, and her husband's an investor out there as well. And we're sitting down over dinner and we're talking about the Seattle real estate market. And I couldn't make a deal happen in Seattle, to be honest with you. I, the numbers were too yeah. high. It's a really pricey market out there right now. But, you know, listen to people who know more than you. I listened into, you know, what they said over dinner that night. And we spent three months like looking at deals out there. And one of the things that really caught my attention was you know, the city is creating major infrastructure for yeah. subway. I'm not, they call it light rail actually out there. It's the equivalent of subway, a subway system. They're spending about 25 billion in subway systems oh, out wow. there. Okay. And That's everywhere cool. the city is investing in this metro system across the city, they're doing what's called upzoning. So they're taking areas where there, there were a lot of single family homes. Mm -hmm. 
and the city saying like, well, that area now is going to be designated to be a future town center. We don't want single family homes. That's home. what's going on in Seattle now? It's, it's already happened. Oh, okay. and, and it's progressing out to outer areas as well. Okay. So they're like, you know, shoreline area, we're going to turn this half mile district from single family yeah. into commercial. They The city upzone all those lots from residential zoning into uh -huh. commercial lots. Oh, wow. And now you got developers swarming in Getting and buying it. multiple yeah. parcels for 200 unit multifamily residential developments, um, wow. town center, commercial for grocery stores and stuff. So I, we looked at that stuff. We're like, you know, the numbers don't work, but I see the opportunity here. Um, came back to DC, thought and thought and thought. And then one day something came across my desk. Um, I believe Jeff Walsh sent this to me. Jeff, shout out to you, man. Jeff Walsh sends this to me, comes into my email box, Route 1 Redevelopment Corridor. I'm like, what's this? So I start reading about Route 1 in Alexandria Redevelopment Corridor. Yeah. And little do I know, they're going to add two new metro stations down Route 1 in the next five years. Oh, there. And same thing. Uh, the city's redevelop, uh, rezoning, upzoning a lot of parcels on that stretch. because so you got it right here in your backyard. Got it here in the backyard. Right. And you do your homework. Honestly, yeah. like there's so many. Once you start to look at this, there's so many areas that are doing this. 267 mm -hmm. corridor out to Dulles. You know, they're expanding that train station out to Dulles yeah. now. Same thing in yeah. Herndon. Same thing in Reston. Um, you're going to see same things out in Leesburg happening. On. A lot so going on in Virginia right now. You it's really got to identify the opportunities because the opportunities are everywhere. If you go in Georgia Avenue in Montgomery County, same things happening there. Yeah. Go to Baltimore, there's stuff happening there. A lot of this comes down to knowing what you're looking for. So yeah. for the first thing is, what is the city doing? What are they sponsoring in your backyard that fits the category? Right. So we pick Route 1. We're like, you know, Route 1 is close to where we are close to our office. We sort of know the area already because we've done a lot of flips down there. And lo and behold, we got lucky as people in real estate call it. We got lucky. And from our marketing, a gentleman calls us and he's got a classic 900 square foot teardown house mm -hmm. uh, right off the heart of Route 1. Mm -hmm. And, you know, didn't even, it, it just came across the desk one day and we're like, you know, it's a, it's a fix and flip type project. It's and you're going to buy it for X, you're going to put this much into it, 50, 60K, and you're going to sell it for that. And then I went home one night and, you know, I thought about that project and thought about what we'd been looking over the last two, three years. Yeah. And I checked the up zone maps and I'm like, holy cow. Lo and behold, right? He's in the, he's got a fix and flip. It'll work as that. Yeah. Um, but he's in the up zone corridor and yeah. not only he's in the up zone corridor, He's got what's called residential four zoning right now, but they've already designated him to be CA commercial, okay. which is heavy highway commercial. Essentially what it does is it supports anything from um, industrial um, to retail to office. Those are the three major uses of it. And we basically determined from our feasibility that this half acre parcel was not just a house that we could renovate, Mm -hmm. It's actually an 11,500 square foot development opportunity for us to build industrial or office or retail or mixed use. That's great. And right. most viewers are probably asking like, well, it's a house. Why does it matter? Commercial's worth way more. So much more. So much more than a residential house. So yeah. the day we closed on that property um, and the day we knew it was, it was CA commercial, we just made about five times what we paid for it the day we closed. Exciting. That's exciting. And the day we develop this parcel into what yeah. we think it can be, it'll be worth even more than that. So commercials, like you got to get the right opportunities. You know, so many people are like focused on all these butterfly effects, but you know, focus on the opportunities that make sense mm -hmm. uh, for your business, where you're at today, what's worth your time. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of people are getting multifamily deals out in, South Dakota or wherever, but you know, is that really going to be worth your time and effort and energy or getting that one deal where your company controls a hundred percent, you know, which one is the better option for you? That, that's a, that's a company decision. Right. And sometimes it's in your own backyard. It's right here where you are. Right. Exa exactly. Yeah. So talk to us a little bit about the real flip formula that coming up yeah so excited about so, hearing so 10 years in now like <laughs> folks are like josh you've gone guru on us 
And I'm like, I haven't gotten Guru on you yet. Uh, Real Flip Forma is actually something that I've thought about for years now, because all of us who have really seriously gotten into the game, you know, we all face those same struggles in the course of our career. I've, you know, I got in this business for six years, and to be honest with you, I burnt out and I was ready to move on. I didn't want to invest anymore. I'm like yeah. we've made money, but you know, I'm I'm tired. In 2014, I'm like I'm tired. I'm ready to shut this down and move yeah. on. But you were doing it all a lot of it yourself. Right? A lot of it yeah. myself. Yeah. Um, it wasn't. We didn't have a system. We the didn't team. have a process. We yeah. didn't really have a true business. Yeah. Um, everything that we're sort of touching on today, like, is why people burn out. But so I thought about this last three, four years, and I see where we've gone with our business in the last four years, five years now. And I see like the three core ingredients of why most people never really get to the place they want to be in this business. Yeah. And don't call me a guru because I don't like to be called a guru. Oh. I, I really want to be like someone who helps you, helps you if you're in the place where I was. How do I help you yeah. get to where you really need to be? And I'll tell you the three main areas. It, it, it's, it breaks down to three things. You got to get the right deals. You got to be able to fund and manage those deals. Mm -hmm. And once you've done that, you got to be able to scale that business. And most investors fall apart in either one of those three areas yeah. or all those three areas. And real flip formula, like it's going to blow yeah, your mind because it's going to get you out of that, out of that box. Um, our business 2014, you know, 2009 to 14 went like that and it just flatlined and came down. And, you know, how do you grow a business that goes, we all want to do that. How do you grow a business that goes like this? Keep going up. Yeah. All of us want to do that. And if you don't attack those three core areas and have a system in place to really focus in on each of those, it's impossible to do this. It yeah. really is. It's impossible to do that. Yeah. So let's get out of the guru zone. Let's go with how I do, want to be a guru. Huh? Uh, let's just get your business working right. Because yeah. people who get their business working right, there's more opportunities for everyone. There really yeah. is. Like if I can get out there and teach a hundred people how to really grow their business, yeah. you know, they're going to talk to other people that are out there and say, you know, I got all these deals, you know, Pam, can you help me do this deal with me? Or Josh, can you help me do that deal with me? When everyone is succeeding, there's just a lot more deals for everyone. Yeah. And when 99 people are struggling and only one person is doing well, then that one person's in the corner, like stealing all the deals and they think they're like helping themselves, but they're really not because if that one person realized that 99 other folks could really, you know, get in the business and kill it, they would get more deals too. It, right. It's just common sense. Yeah. Just give and it'll come back. Right? So forget yeah. the guru zone yeah. and let's just talk about doing more deals. Mm -hmm. And that's what Real Flip Formula is about. And November 9th, we're going to have a packed house. Uh, Sheraton, Pentagon City. It's going to be the uh, Galaxy Ballroom. It's an amazing space. Okay. Uh, it's going to be an amazing Sounds space. Exciting. Looking out on DC, a great environment, great people are going to be showing up. Um, and we're going to be talking about systems that take your business to that next level. Okay. Yeah. Josh is actually amazing because he's just so humble about who he is and what he does. He's always giving back, you know, and, and we really appreciate your time today. He wants to give back and share his success because he is so successful and he doesn't want to go into the guru thing, I know, <laughs> but he just really is giving back so much of what he's learned through these years. And we greatly appreciate your time here. And we look forward to seeing you at the master class again at the Sheraton. Yeah, Pam, Pam is actually going to be one of our sponsors over there. So stop by her desk, come talk to her. Pam's doing amazing things here in the DC region, her own radio show. You got to meet Pam. Okay. Um, one thing I want to just uh, follow up on real quickly to summarize. It doesn't matter where you're at in your investment career today. Um, people are asking me, you know, can, can I be a beginner? Can I have not done one deal yet? Or can I have done 20 or 50 deals already? It doesn't matter where you're at. The point of Real Flip Formula is that it doesn't matter where you're at. It's where do you want to go? And for anybody who comes, we're going to show you wherever it is you want to go. We're going to get you to take you there. We're going to take you there to that next level. So beginner, never done a deal, done a few deals, done a ton of deals. Think about before you show up, where do I want to go in my business? Because we're going to take you there. Yeah. Thank you so much for being with us. And we look forward to seeing you on November 9th with Josh Cohen here at DC First Properties. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you so much, Pam, for having me. Thank You're you welcome. so much.